Hey there, today is Monday, June the 20th. Today we're reading Proverbs 29 through 31 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And uh, I've been sitting here just kind of looking through these passages, realizing that the rest of the week, or the next three days at least, we're going to be reading in Song of Solomon, uh, which is a, a different kind of book of the Bible. It's a love story between a husband and his wife and this beautiful thing. And So this is what we're going to do this week. I really, I want to talk about Proverbs 31 just a little bit, and then I want to look at the next three days. We're going to kind of step out of the Bible reading a little bit. I want you to read all the days, but rather than talk about what it says in the text of Song of Solomon, I want to talk about marriages. I really do. As I'm looking at Proverbs 31 right here, at the end of the chapter, the very end of the book of Proverbs, it says it's an, it's an epilogue. It's a, a tagged on ending. A wife of noble character, it says here in the text. And it talks about a wife of noble character. Who can find? She's worth more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. It's describing, through Proverbs 31, the type of wife that a husband should be looking for and the type of a marriage that they should be having together. Guys, let me level with you for a second. There might be, uh, let me back up. If there were a top three things that the enemy, that Satan is going to attack in your life, the top three things, I believe he's going to attack your pride. Your pride. He's going to tell you, you are better than you really are. You deserve more than you really do. And he's going to give you a heaping load of pride to wreck your relationships and your own heart. He's going to attack you in the area of money. In fact, Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, the love of money, it's not money itself. The love of money is the root of evil. He's going to attack you in that area. And then third, he's going to attack our marriages. He's going to attack our marriages. He's going to attack our relationships. He's going to try to tell us that, hey, you live in the year 2022. It's okay to live together before you're married. He's going to tell, the enemy's going to tell us that, hey, this is modern day here. Have sex before you're married. It's okay. He's going to try to tell us that, that it's okay to have same-sex relationships and to have these things. And I'm going to be honest with you, more honest than maybe I've been in a while with you. The Bible says that there's one kind of a union between people when it comes to marriage. There's a man and there's a woman. And those two come together and let what God joined not be separated by anyone. And anything outside of that, any kind of physical, intimate relationship outside of a man and a woman being married before God is sin. Period. Two men, two women, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, two fiancés, it doesn't matter. Any type of sexual behavior outside of marriage is sin. Bottom line. And what I want for you is to experience the relationships and ultimately the marriage that God wants you to have. And as we read in Proverbs 31, yes, it talks about it talks about the woman a lot. What she is, how she works, what she does, how she looks, all these it talks about her a lot. But then it talks about her husband being respected. It talks about how her husband needs to honor her for all she's done. If we jump ahead to the New Testament, the Apostle Paul talks about marriage as well. He talks about marriage and, and he paints this picture of how a wife needs to love her husband like the church loves and submits to Jesus. And a husband needs to love his wife like Jesus loved the church, sacrificing for her. I, I love, in the message paraphrase of the Bible, I love this particular passage. The way it phrases it, one phrase in particular says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church, dressing her in dazzling white silk. And as I read that, and as I consider Proverbs 31 and then look ahead to the Song of Solomon, what I am convicted of is that husbands, we, we have a mandate from God to invest in our wives, to improve her life, to lead her closer to Jesus, to protect her, to sacrifice for her. 
and, and ladies, I, I believe you have a mandate from God to love your husband before any other man, to love your husband and to serve him in a way that honors him and shows him what this union should be like. It's not one way. There's no more burden on the woman than on the man or on the man than the woman. It's equal. I want us to have the marriages that God wants for us. So here's what we're going to do this week, for the next three days at least. If, if you are married, I'm going to be speaking specifically to your marriage. Some practical things you can do to in, increase the value of your marriage, to improve the state of your marriage, to honor your spouse, and to love well. If you are not married, if you are engaged, I'm going to be talking about things you might consider as you enter marriage. If you are dating somebody, I'm going to be talking about things you can do right now in your dating life that will set you up for the marriage God wants you to have. If you're single and you have no uh, intention of getting married anytime soon, I'm going to share things that you can actually use in your friendships, at your, at your workplace, with your coworkers, things to improve your relationships. These things apply to everybody, but I'm talking specifically to marriages. I hope you'll join us for the next three days as we talk about marriage. I hope that if you have friends, maybe you have somebody in your life, a neighbor, a coworker, a friend, and you know that they could use a little encouragement in their marriage, then I want, I want to challenge you to do this today. Right now, I want to challenge you to invite your friend to join this online church campus, this Facebook group right here, so they can enjoy the videos and be encouraged and challenged like you are the next three days. Now, don't just tag your friends in it. No one likes to be called out like that. Invite them to join so they can watch as well and then have conversations with them about what they took away from it. And today, one more challenge for you. In your marriage or your relationship or your friendship, Pray for the one you love. Pray. Don't ask God for anything for yourself. Pray that God would bless the one you love. And ask God to show you how you can be a blessing to the one you love. And then join me tomorrow as we continue on talking about how marriages can be godly and healthy. Until I see you then, you are sent.